Hello, welcome to another Toneless Landscape oil painting demonstration. This is your painter in residence, M. Francis McCarthy. And the painting I'm bringing you today is called Country Road. I painted this a couple days back. It's painted on a textured board. Uh, it's an 8x12 and I'm real happy with it and happy to share it with you today. So maybe as you're watching me put this together, we'll, uh, we'll just burble along about some... Uh, painting related ideas and uh, see if uh, we can't spend a nice 15 minutes together yes um, okay so the board was textured last year by uh, my student Ash and uh, I am really a lot more into smooth boards these days although I have to say you get a really nice result with the texture too and I think it has a lot of appeal. So every now and again, I'll load one up and, and paint on it. And what what are the the big differences? Well, the number one uh, difference would be your brush technique. You've got to make sure you push your paint into the little crevasse, crevasses. I don't know how that's pronounced. The little the little indentations, you know. Uh, also, you're going to need to use a bit more oil. You're going to need your paint more fluid. So I think it's uh, a thinner paint film as well. Um, here we are uh, painting with the uh, the color that we're doing is a it's like an amended uh, burn number. It's got a little extra alizarin in it and a little bit of burnt sienna. And I thought about doing some black in it too, but then this is one of those paintings where I decided just to reserve all that for the the color painting stage. Now I did paint this scene before; um, it was last year as a six by eight. I flipped it, and uh, uh, a wonderful supporter of the channel actually owns that lovely little painting. And um, I thought, well, they said when they bought it, uh, yeah, you could always paint it again, and I'm gonna. I did. I'm real happy with how it turned out too. I don't know if I love it more than my little six by eight, but I'm happy. I'm always ecstatic when my painting is in someone's home being enjoyed. That is like the final part of the process. You know, you could uh, uh, obviously I don't create paintings for just for the sake of selling them. I create paintings because I I need to create beautiful things and I want to always make a, a better painting you know but uh, it's not really complete until somebody else uh, comes along and decides that they think it's beautiful and they want to live with it and uh, that's always very fulfilling like I said not so fulfilling that'd be my reason for making a painting but it's fulfilling yeah, so I want to talk a little bit about, I had this, uh, you know, there's a, um, I mean, I'll try and um, remember to include a link to the texturizing video. I know I'll get questions about that. It's a process um, that involves basically black gesso uh, because uh, the black gesso, I think I used Matisse brand, but probably several, it's quite thick. And uh, you, I lay it in with a kind of um, my biggest palette knife, and uh, I manipulate it pretty extensively with the palette knife and some crumpled newspaper, and then I come in and do other things here. A lot of times I was coming in and doing oil painting uh, brush strokes on it, but here what I opted to do was go over it with a coat of that sort of burnt sienna tone house paint, and I think that was a really good call because uh, it was a lovely color to paint on it was a very fulfilling experience um, things that are different uh, with the texture like I said it's I think uh, you don't have to work as hard on your edges because the texture is helping you break up those edges and I think that's one of the reasons why a lot of people like canvas with a little bit of adjustment though you can you get very used to working on a smooth board and there your edges are created with your brush strokes you know and here I had a, a good reference and I, I followed it somewhat I'd say my sky is a little bit uh, more amorphous and there were some areas like uh, right underneath those main trees coming off the hill 
and uh, oh, by the way you can see the reference image in the members area 4k no ads that's uh, six bucks a month of which uh, Google gets half uh, but there's hundreds of videos in there live of me painting uh, where you can see the reference you can see the initial color mixing sessions and you're basically a fly on the wall in the studio what what's that my book hey I'm getting ready to take an order to the uh, post office this morning I really appreciate people investing in the book and investing in their their painting education and I, I do my best to always pass along tips here in the channel but the book's got it all in one place and uh, an uh, amazing addition to the book is going to be these video courses so I think you're gonna probably where are they, Mike? I, I haven't had anyone actually ask me where they are, but I know there are people that are interested. And um, they are done, but now I am um, um, basically dragging them up the mountain, the marketing mountain. And not that my marketing is anything going to be fancy, but I need a landing page and I got to set up a... Oh, it's just a lot of work. Anyway, uh, they'll probably be ready. Uh, in fact, they definitely will be ready. The videos are done. They'll definitely be available for sale early in March. And the best thing to do is join my mailing list um, so you can get access to the very lowest and best price on the courses when they're actually you'll find out about them too before anyone else. Yeah. Anyway, enough of that. So, what we're doing here is coming in with our real darks. And we had a bit of a template set up with the underpainting. And I think that's really valuable. I talked about that on many videos uh, so I won't get into that today but it's good to know where you need to put things especially how the sky relates to the trees you know um, but in this uh, and a lot of times when I'm doing that drawing phase I will go ahead and go uh, much darker um, here I reserved all that for uh, I see this is the first step of the color part of process of the landforms and it's black with some crimson in it I popped in a little bit of perylene too just to kind of balance things out I wanted a lot of a ready kind of feeling humming through uh, mostly to counteract um, the greens there's going to be a lot of greens uh, in the grass and the trees uh, although I really amped up the red too and uh, as I pointed out well you know I'm pointing out the same stuff all the time here but we get new people and sometimes insights might go flying by you but the real key to you know let's face it if you're a landscape painter you've got to wrangle with the greens it's the greens it's green everywhere you know different shades of green the secret to making attractive landscape paintings that aren't fall scenes is red uh, you cram a lot of red in and you see that's what I'm doing here I'm making whole chunks of the painting red and it's sort of similar to the color that's in the board color already but it, it generally speaking there are times I will leave uh, in fact I'll leave lots of little patches of that board color peeking through but if it's a larger area I'll even if I like that board color as the uh, sort of placeholder color there I'll go in with a paint color that's mixed it's sort of similar as you saw me doing that um, bit of foliage there and uh, I have to say, actually, when I got home and uh, sort of started putting this um, this video together, which I had to do uh, because uh, we had an incident with Jerry where he was just absolutely insane. And I did not want that uh, immortalized in the um, members area for all time. Jerry being my dog, who's so anxious and eager to say hi to people. It's not even funny. Uh, so anyway, I came home that night and basically clipped out some of those bits and uh, got this composite and had a chance to look at it a little bit. And I was thinking, well, I'm really, really happy with that. And I knew it would be because, you know, um, here's a clue. You know, if you are you do a painting and it sells, that's a pretty good indicator that you've got a good composition on your hands. Okay. So uh, in this case, most of the composition uh, came directly from my photography. Uh, what did not a lot of changes I tell you what I did change though since you don't have access to the members area and uh, my uh, discussion about it there um, you see this road now when you were to go take a picture of this road it probably would have gone all the way up the side of the uh, you know the image on our left 
I brought that in I squeeze those roads way narrower because uh, just about any camera that you're uh, even a lot of phone cameras automatically adjust the focal length based on different scenes a wide focal length will give you a really wide road that that it is, is acceptable in the photo because we know that's how photos are but when you do that in your painting it looks wrong oh now there's an area I'm going to work on here that and uh, it's coming up <clears throat> I really had to navigate see where that brightest bit of sky is going up against that tree eventually I knew something was niggling me there and in the reference there was a lot of dark overlapping layers of tree there so uh, I basically had to do some invention and what I decided to do was just give it a bit of a trim a bit of a haircut and I did that with sky color you'll see that coming up um, the road I tried to get that gray as uh, warm as possible now these are uh, country roads out here they're made with we call it metal out here I think we call it gravel in the states it's just these ground up rocks and um, it's not like you know pavement they're pretty cool looking uh, they can go quite gray this one ended up more maybe more gray than I'd wanted to but I had to reconcile um, a lot of factors, as you do with every painting. Uh, it was pretty fun, to, to be honest, because one thing about the texture, it doesn't really allow me to get too tweaky with little bits of things. You know, you have to paint with a little more patchy approach. And uh, I'm just looking at it now. We're both looking at it together. I'm thinking that succeeded real nice. I think it's real, real lovely. I, I've got to get back to a place where I'm uh, putting things in the store. I, 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 you know, the great, I had a great system in that. <laughs> well, I had a flawed system originally where I would wait months to photograph something and then put it in the store. And then I came up with an idea where I'll just take a screenshot and then clean that up. And we sold a few paintings that way, but the, the, the problem is that sometimes I felt like I wanted to make a change or I wanted to do this or that. And it's in the store, so I don't. And then, you know, we sell some things in the store, but it's not like I spend a lot of time, you know, promoting that. Um, the main, the main thrust of my my business is, you know, getting things in the galleries and things. Um, although God knows, I love selling uh, to you. Um, if you want a painting, just let me know. Anyway, it'd be nice to get that. I will be sorting out the store sometime around when I get my. I'm going to do a curated show on my site. That's my idea. I just need to clone myself to do it. Okay, and now to so the greens. Uh, one thing I want to point out to you, and you would have, you would have caught, uh, caught wind of this in the members area because you know what I was using uh, to get these colors. But one of my favorite little and I, techniques uh, that uh, I don't mind passing on to you, you're, you know, here you are watching my video and you're all the way at like something like 13 something minutes okay uh one of the colors on my palette is permanent green light which is this crazy super bright fluorescent green color it's not usable on its own but what it is very good for is if you have a color of uh, on your palette that you mixed and you need a green you can just bring in the permanent green light and it'll give you this beautiful sort of green I tend to hold that in reserve for the grass areas a lot of times if I have a real extensive landscape like this is there's a lot of greens I'll use the Mike's green mostly in the trees with some reds and things and then I, I use aspects of the permanent green light for the grasses and that's good because it's a bit of a distinction you know permanent green light is uh, made with phthalo green and uh, acrylide yellow just so you know anyway looks like that's it for today's video thank you so much for joining me i really appreciate you uh please leave me a comment i'm getting lonely over here i didn't i don't think i got any on the last video which makes me sad but until i come back with another video for your edification and enjoyment do me a favor do me a solid take good care of yourself your family all your loved ones stay out of trouble and god bless you and your family fight the power